how can you stream the log from your device to your computer so you can see what's going on within your game without having a console. So obviously, you'll need a phone, you'll need a wire to connect to your computer, but you'll also need the Android SDK. So I'll let you find out what the Android SDK is. If you don't know, and if you don't have it, you can click, I think it's on this side or the other side, the little eye that pops up. This is a video that will let you know how to install the Android SDK for your computer. Okay, so once you have that, you're going to find the Android SDK and where it is installed. For my very specific case, I put it under local disk C. But if you install this through Android Studio, you might want to go over to App Data and then you'll find it somewhere here. I think it's going to be like an Android folder. Not sure. <laughs> You're going to have to find that out yourself. Okay. Once you have the Android SDK root folder, this is where we are. Um, you're supposed to see all of these folders. If you haven't seen that, it's because you've never updated your SDK. And for that, well, you can refer to the same video I've mentioned earlier. Under here, we are interested by the adb.x, so the application that runs adb. adb stands for Android Debug Bridge. So that's what we'll be using. So how do we use this? Well, if you just double click on it, you can't really run that. That's a shell script. So here's what you'll need to do. You're going to hold shift and right click anywhere in your folder, start a PowerShell window, or for some reason, if that doesn't work for you, you can always um, go and run something like CMD. If that doesn't work for you, you can always run a command. So CMD like that, and then you'll have this type of shell. With this, well, first you wanna to go to that folder. So I'll grab this and we are inside of this folder. The same exact folder you see here, that's just a console. Now what you'll do, you'll type in adb.exe or you can just press adb and then tap and then here you go. So you'll have the file and then you'll need to shoot a couple of arguments. All right, let's start with an easy one. We're going to do adbx devices. You'll see the list of attached device right now to your computer. That is my phone right here. If you don't see anything, that's because your phone is not detected, in which case I recommend that um, you install proper drivers for it. So if you have a Samsung phone, I had that happen to me in the past, uh, you'll, you'll have to install Samsung driver for that phone. If you have a Google Pixel, the first one, I think you'll have to install the Google USB driver, but I think they come in an update now. Um, it should be there, and if it's not there, this is the first issue you'll need to fix. You'll need to make sure you have a device. Now what we'll be doing next is we'll call adb.exe, but we'll say logcat. And that is going to print pretty much everything that has been going on with my phone. Let me go ahead and start a Unity game. So here's my Unity game on the computer over there. You'll be able to see the log associated with this computer game, Android game. If I try to log in, you'll see stuff about the login in um, Google Play services. Now it's a mess. You'll have a lot of problem actually figuring out what you want. Assuming you're trying to debug a Unity game, what you can say is given a certain argument. Now I've swapped over to PowerShell because I like it better because it allows me to clear. It's just a little bit more easy for me. So um, we're going to do the exact same thing, the same exact line, but this time we'll add the S parameter and then we'll give in a keyword to look for. So Unity in that instance. And now you'll find out that everything you see over here is stuff that you actually get within Unity. Those are debug.log happening during my game. And we are live. So as we're going to open our application, this is going to boot up. So here, let me click. You'll see it. So you have some, um, some graphic library being instantiated. And then when I click on my play button, you'll see stuff related to my game. So what this play button does, just to let you know, is the Google Play services. And with the Google Play services, it tries to log in. So you'll see everything here about the play game plugin DLL you'll find out a couple of things about debug.log that I manually put in my code. So say over here. Now this is very useful because eventually when you push your game in the future to the Play Store, you'll have to test it out on the device. It's always fun to do it in the editor, but at one point you have to go on the device and you have to find out why things don't work over there as good as they do in the editor. What do you think, Pepe? especially when it comes to Google Play services, because those will not work without a signature on your application. So we sign our app, we push it on our phone, and then we can use the Google Play services afterward. So required, it's a skill that you'll have to pick up and it's something you'll have to put in your routine as you're going, um, you know, going inside the Google Play services and also going inside of just debugging stuff in general. A lot of people come up to me and they're like, 
hey, I tried to boot my application on my phone and it doesn't work at all. I can't, I can't even know I don't have any feedback from my game. This is going to give you feedback. And so, you know, sometime when you have a big problem, you might have to run Logcat without looking at only Unity strings because um, in terms of the Google Play Store, I had to figure out that the application ID was not found um, on my end. And that did not say it in Unity, it said it directly on the Google Play Services plugin. And the code only returned a boolean to tell me whether it's successful or it's a failure. Like I didn't get a reason why it was a failure, which is why I needed this. So yeah, that's it guys. Thanks for watching, I hope this was helpful to some of you, and I will catch you very soon. Cheers.